education lesson, we'll be talking about cooking chicken and meats to the proper temperature. Um, also talking about the safety zone and how to use a meat thermometer to make sure you cook something to the proper temperature. So to start off the class, I will want to know what the students already know. And so in order to pre-assess them, I'm going to plan on giving them a pop quiz, which I will hand out to each student. And to go um, around the room, and we'll go through the quiz together out loud. So I'll read through each question, and that way students that struggle with reading disabilities will be able to hear the quiz spoken verbally. And as a class, we will go through, and we'll discuss each question, and they will be given the opportunity to answer on their own. And then when we have completed the quiz out loud, we will go back through and go through each answer again and talk about it and see what students were able to get that answer correct based on prior knowledge and what students got the answer wrong. And so that will give me an assessment of kind of where they're each at and what they all already know. Once they've done the pop quiz, I will then discuss with them through a PowerPoint and lecture demonstration the different things we need to cover for that day. So proper storing of foods um, with the different temperatures in a fridge and a freezer, and then how to cook foods for proper temperature, different types of meat, um, whether it's in the oven or grilling or boiling, just so you know that you have it to the right temperature. And then the third thing we'll talk about also is the danger zone. And so as I have this PowerPoint, I'll go through and I will talk about the different things we're learning for that day. And then I will also have it up there on the PowerPoint as a visual for students that kind of struggle with um, just maybe reading from the PowerPoint. And so they'll get to hear it through audio and through visual um, to address both of those learning styles. And so we'll go through the PowerPoint together as a class and we'll be very interactive and ask questions as they need to and um, be able to focus on learning that material. And then after we go through the PowerPoint, they will then have the opportunity to ask me any questions that they have. And then I will demonstrate to them the how to use a meat thermometer and demonstrate to them showing in one of the kitchens in the classroom, because the classroom will be set up with different kitchens. I'll demonstrate to them in the fridge and the freezer where they can adjust the temperature range. So for example, we'll learn that um, a temperature, a fridge, needs to be at least 34 degrees around that area um, for food to be, it can't be anywhere above 40 or 41 degrees or else that's in the danger zone. And so I'll top them. The danger zone is from 40 to 140 degrees. And you don't want any food to be sitting in that, in that danger zone for too long or else it'll go bad and it can cause food poisoning. So once I've taught them that a fridge can be no more than 40 degrees, um, and usually it sits between like 34 and 40 degrees. I will take them to the kitchen, such as one like this. I'll open up the fridge, and as you can't see in the video, but I'll point to them and show them the different dials. There's two dials in this fridge that control the temperature. And along the side, it also gives use and care inf information and instructions, and that should be found in almost every refrigerator. And on there, it'll talk about how to make sure how to keep your foods wrapped and covered and different things that will also help you to make sure food is stored properly. And that's always on the inside of the refrigerator. And then I will show them in the freezer, there's also more instructions um, about how the freezer runs and how the freezer works. And then there's also a dial inside the freezer that controls the temperature as well. And so a refrigerator, you want to be below 40 degrees, about above 34, 32 is freezing point. So you want about above 34, 34 and 40 degrees. And then in the freezer, you want the freezer to be below 32 degrees. Um, and we'll talk about different things. I don't want your freezer, your fridge packed with food because that can lower the temperature and things like that. So each student will have the opportunity to see those demonstrated to them so they can understand that concept. Remember that between 40 and 140 degrees is the, safe, the danger zone, and so they don't want food sitting in that. And so when you cook food, now that you know you have to store it within those cold ranges, when you cook food, you have to get it hot enough to kill any bacteria that is in the food or any diseases or something picked up, maybe by the animal or through cross-contamination 
different things like that. So for example, this is a package of frozen chicken. Um, I'm not going to cook it today, but in a normal lecture, I would have pre-cooked meat, and they would see that, and then we would pull out the different meat thermometers that they're going to use and practice when they go and do their lab, which will be right after the demonstration so that they understand that they learn the material and they can implement it in the lab together. And so I will teach them that there are several types of meat thermometers and they can all range in temperatures. And some of them, such as this one, is a longer one, will have, this one starts at 50 degrees Fahrenheit and goes all the way up to 550. So right now it's sitting at a room temperature of about 70 degrees. And you can see that on the meat thermometer. And so you know that this is what the room temperature is. However, there are other meat thermometers that might be a little more confusing, such as this one. Um, I'll see if you can see it, but this one doesn't start at 50 degrees, so it might look like it's broken because it's all the way down here. However, that's just because when it starts reading the temperature, it's going to start at 130, so it'll spin all the way around. So when the students understand that, they're going to realize, oh, this isn't broken. This is just how it starts. It's reading. So it's actually down here. This is room temperature way down here. Um, Whereas this one started at 50 degrees, and so you know that it'll rise, and you'll see it do that. Whereas this one won't even start reading it until it's at about 110 degrees Fahrenheit. And so that's just a way, I'll just show them that there are different types of meat thermometers that they can use, um, and they just need to know how to read them. And so when they use a meat thermometer, this one's for like a bigger piece of meat because it's longer. And so it can go into like a whole turkey or a bigger roast or something like that so you can get it deep into the center. Because when you use a meat thermometer, you want to go all the way in to the meat, into the very center, because that's what's gonna get heated last, very last. And so you wanna make sure the center is very hot and it's to the appropriate temperature. And then there are shorter meat thermometers for smaller pieces of meat like this chicken. So I'll teach them that beef and pork um, need to be cooked for a medium to like a medium rare to 145 degrees. That temperature at 145 degrees will kill all bacteria. So if you're cooking meat to a medium or a medium rare where it can still be raw, as long as the inside gets cooked to 145 degrees, it is safe to eat. And so even if it still is bloody inside, it'll be safe. And so that way they'll know they put their meat thermometer into the meat, into the very center, and it's at 145 degrees. It is now safe to eat and everything in there has been killed um, due to the heat. Pork and um, ground beef to a more medium temperature where it's more cooked is 160 degrees. This one's even safer. So at least 160 degrees for more of a medium cook where it's starting to look done. And then poultry, regardless, you want it to be at 165 degrees. So such as this chicken, it'll need to be at, in the very center, 165 degrees Fahrenheit. The meat thermometer. And then well done beef and pork will be at 170 degrees. And so that's when it's not pink at all in the middle anymore. And so these are temperatures that you will usually want your students to memorize. And so we'll practice memorizing those and implementing that daily through repetition for students that maybe struggle with remembering things um, or have different learning disabilities. If they hear it every single day, then they'll remember because these are good things to know for when they're cooking food in the future. And so after we've talked about the different meat thermometers um, and shown them to them, we will, I will demonstrate to the class how to actually insert into different types of meat. So I would have the chicken here and maybe some pork or maybe a turkey, and that way they can see where they need to put it for different types of meat into the, into the breast or into wherever. And so um, for chicken, so this is a, just a chicken breast that would be cooked um, it's frozen and they'll just insert it. They'll find the very center, the fattest part, because that's what's going to get cooked the longest. The bigger and thicker it is, the longer it'll take to cook and the longer it'll take to heat up. And so you want to insert it there. And so you would insert it into the very center of this chicken breast and you poke it until it's halfway through. And so you get it to the very center and then you have to wait. And a lot of times this takes a while um, for it to slowly rise, but it'll gradually rise and you'll want to check to see that for poultry, it gets to 165 
degrees Fahrenheit. And so as the students, um, once I've demonstrated this to the students, they'll each have the opportunity to join their lab groups in their kitchens, and they'll get their different meat thermometers, and they'll get their chicken that they're going to cook for the day. And they're going to work together as a lab group, if they so desire, in about groups of three or less, and they're going to work, and they're going to cook their chicken. And so they're going to prepare it based off of safety and sanitation we talked about before. They're going to have their lab aprons on and their hair tied back, and they'll work together. And if certain students do better on their own, and they can have that option of working on their own, or certain students may need extra help with them, they can have that opportunity by being able to work in groups of one, two, or three, and so forth. And I'll go around this, the room and monitor them and see how they're doing and encourage them and give them any extra help they need. And the goal is for them to be able to cook their chicken to the appropriate temperature and they'll be able to demonstrate that to me and in, by inserting it and showing me that it's the right temperature and they insert it properly into the chicken. And then they will also be able to reiterate to me, kind of talk about the fridge and the freezer and the proper storing temperatures and how to adjust that and what the danger zone is and things like that. And so after they've completed those assignments, then they will um, be able to clean up their lab and be able to eat their chicken. On another side note, also for students, I can show you on here. Um, some meat thermometers, such as this one, will actually give helpful hints. And so that can be really nice because it'll help students along the way. However, when assessing them, finally, we won't want them to use one like this where they can look at it because we want to make sure they've learned the principle or learned the concept. And so they'd maybe be given a meat thermometer more like this that doesn't actually have the helpful hints on it. But for future, it would be good to buy one that tells you exactly what the different um, degrees are right on there. And so that would be the lesson for the day, going over those different um, concepts and principles about you need to the proper temperature. And as I go through the lesson, I wanted to make sure I had addressed the different needs of the different students in the class. And so when they get the recipes in their lab to work with for cooking the chicken, however they prepare it, um, nowadays you can also get picture recipes. And so for students that maybe struggle with reading, they can have the pictures right next to it that they can associate with the words, and that'll help them be able to read the recipe along with their student, the other students and be able to understand it so they can complete the lab. And so that's just another um, accommodation that can be made to help students that struggle with that. And I found they can be very helpful, um, even for students that are really good at reading, just to see a picture of what they're gonna be doing can help them be, oh, I need to grab that type of pot or something, just a reminder. Also, um, other accommodations will just be the verbal instructions that I give them and help them with, and the demonstrating I do, like I'll wear my own apron, I'll have my own hair tied back so they can see that concept and remember it. Um, and so I will be the example by demonstrating things for them. And so the goal is to be able to make sure all students feel comfortable with one another and they're able to work together and we can address the different needs in the classroom and then through the PowerPoint they'll be able to get the material that they need they'll be able to hear it from me through the lecture and then they'll be able to apply it and do it through the lab and also if students need extra help in the classroom like an assistant or a tutor with them it's very easy to allow them to come into the kitchen and work alongside the student because the rest of you will be right there for them and then I'll be right there for them as well. And so we can all work together to help out certain students. Because in a cooking and a food class, it can be kind of hard if one student's a big distraction um, or certain things are going on um, that are distracting to students that can get distracted easily and need to really focus. And so it's good to be able to break students up into smaller groups and kitchens and not let them get too crowded so students don't get too rowdy and other students can concentrate and focus on material. And so hopefully through all these different things and through this lesson plan, they will be able to, all different types of students, even those struggling with learning disabilities that are in this class, will be able to grasp the concepts and obtain and understand what they need to.